An ICBM, or Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, is a very long-range missile that has the capacity to travel distances of greater than 6,000 miles. An ICBM is typically designed for nuclear weapons delivery. Initially a response to the Cold War, intercontinental ballistic missiles have revolutionized the nature of military defense. Most people may not realize, but the first ICBM was in 1959 uh, with an Atlas that was fueled actually at Vandenberg Air Force Base. And over history, we've gone through Titan, Atlas, and we're now with Minuteman, and we've had Peacekeeper. Uh, we've really had uh, Minuteman 3 for about 35 years now, and the missile that we started with is not the missile that we have today. We've continued to modernize it. This is not a Cold War relic that's just sitting in the ground, rusting away. We continue to modernize it today, and it's a very capable weapon system. The present battery of Minuteman missiles is on standby alert, a product of intense engineering, excellent design, and decades of program evolution. The missiles are housed in locations called operational wings. Each wing is composed of squadrons. Each squadron has five flights. Each flight consists of a launch control center, or LCC, and 10 launch facilities, or LFs, each housing one missile. So each squadron has 50 missiles within its control. A network of buried cables, called Hardened Intersight Cable System, or HICS, directly connects the launch facilities with their parent launch control center and permits for the interconnection between adjacent launch facilities and launch facilities and launch control centers in the same squadron. This interconnectivity allows the launch control centers to initiate the launch of all missiles in a squadron and ensure survivability through redundant propagation of commands. If for some reason the LCCs in a squadron could not launch the missiles, airborne launch control centers are given access to launch the missiles from the air. Each launch control center is housed within a missile alert facility along with a launch control support building and a launch control equipment building. The launch control support building is positioned above ground. It contains the support facilities necessary to continuously man the launch control center and to maintain a flight security force under normal operations. The launch control equipment support building contains the electrical power and the environmental support equipment necessary to sustain operation of the command and control communications equipment located in the launch control center and permits the LCC to be inhabited for an extended period of time should it fall under attack. The LCC contains the launch control equipment and command communications. This is where the launch crew is stationed. The Launch Control Center is located approximately 60 feet below ground. In addition to the launch control equipment and the command communications equipment, it contains many other systems, including power supplies, digital data systems, telephone and communications equipment, the weapon system console, shock isolating units, oxygen regeneration units, emergency air conditioning, and sleeping quarters. The launch facility, or LF, is also located underground and consists of the ground support equipment and Minuteman 3 missile. Each LF also has a support building that contains environmental control equipment and a standby power generator. The assembled missile rests upright in the launch facility and is supported at the base by a suspension system. An equipment room is located around the upper portion of the launch tube and it contains launch control equipment and guidance section cooling equipment. Electrical connections are made to the missile through upper and lower umbilical cables. The launcher closure is made of reinforced concrete. During the launch sequence, it is opened laterally by a pyrotechnically actuated piston and cable system. Minuteman 3 consists of a three-stage solid propellant booster, which is almost 60 feet tall and five and one-half feet in diameter at its widest point. The fully outfitted missile weighs almost 80,000 pounds and can eventually reach a speed of about 13,000 miles per hour, or approximately 3.6 miles per second. Beginning at the base of the missile are the nozzle exit cones, which are attached to the first stage booster and enclosed by a suspension system adapter ring. 
The first stage booster typically propels Minuteman 3 about 18 nautical miles downrange to an altitude of approximately 100,000 feet. Next is the second stage booster, which is connected to stage one by an interstage or skirt. The stage two rocket motor propels Minuteman approximately 90 nautical miles downrange to an altitude of 340,000 feet. The third stage booster is designed to operate in the upper atmosphere and it provides the final boost for the post-boost vehicle. All of these sections make up what is called the downstage part of Minuteman and account for about three quarters of its total length. Sitting on top of the downstage is the Propulsion System Rocket Engine, or PSRE. This provides for post-boost maneuvering used for positioning and deploying the re-entry vehicle. Following the PSRE is the Missile Guidance Set, or MGS, an inertial-type guidance system. The MGS provides both guidance and flight control during the three stages of boost flight and during the post-boost phase. The last section of Minuteman is the re-entry system, or RS. The RS is composed of three major subsystems. The deployment module, which is mounted on top of the missile guidance set. The re-entry vehicle, or RV, that contains the warhead. And finally, the shroud that protects the RV while it is in the atmosphere. Under normal day-to-day -day conditions, Minuteman launch facilities, or LFs, are on alert meaning that they are ready to accept a series of commands to select a target and to launch. The decision to launch would be made by the National Command Authority, normally the President, who would determine that such action is necessary. The National Command Authority would pass the launch authorization on to the United States Strategic Command, or U.S. STRATCOM. U.S. STRATCOM would then pass the launch order on to Minuteman Launch Control Centers in an encoded emergency action message, which identifies the target and the launch timing. Operators at the launch control centers use a secure code to authenticate the emergency action message in order to verify that it is valid. After verifying the emergency action message, the launch control center sends a series of commands to the launch facility. These codes contain targeting information, a specific launch delay time, and a command to enable the missile to launch. Commands are sent, and after the delay time, the missile enters terminal countdown. The terminal countdown sequence takes approximately 28 seconds, after which the missile is launched and the flight portion of Minuteman begins.